street. This is Gypsy Gentleman number four. I'm here in San Diego, standing in front of a mural by Dr. Lacra, uh, one of my favorite artists who's doing stuff uh, with the Mexican cultural heritage. The style is typical of the stuff that you would have seen in Latino culture starting in the late 60s and during the mid 70s in Southern California. This episode is to introduce you to the, for the first time to the Latino influence in tattooing. In the last episode, I tried to tell you a little bit about what was going on in San Francisco during the 70s and the tattoo renaissance and how for the first time, Asian art appeared in the American tattoo landscape. So I've chosen two Latino artists, Bill Canales and Rob Benavides, to go with me to Tijuana to visit a graveyard of Juan Saldado. So I'm hoping by going down there, we'll be super inspired to do some tattoos that definitely have the feeling, the spirit of Latino street culture, the spirit of the tattoos of the 1970s. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I got a couple other things I'm gonna show you in this episode. I'm gonna take you down to the Maritime Museum because San Diego has a long-standing tradition as a port city. Ed Hardy and a lot of other tattooers worked here throughout the 70s tattooing sailors. We're gonna introduce you to the city of San Diego. We'll take you around a little bit to Southern California beach culture the beautiful architecture, and all the cool tattooing and art that's going on down here in the city. This episode is an attempt to expose you to the influence of Latino art on tattooing. It started pretty much in the early 60s and 70s along with the Chicano resistance movement. The park, Chicano Park, represents pretty much the bastion of that sentiment. The United States government decided in the late 60s and early 70s to build a freeway through Chicano Park, which was the only bit of green land that anybody in the Latino community had access to to take their families. All of the Chicanos from northern Mexico and southern California all came together in protest against the government's plans to build this freeway. There was a sit-in for a few months and the government relented and decided to build a freeway over the top of the park. So it became a symbol of the resistance of the Chicano movement. A lot of the Chicano artists at that time started painting murals all over these horrible concrete buttresses that ran up into the sky to hold up the freeway. And to this day, nobody tags down there. And there's sort of an unspoken peace between all the gangs in the area. And it's also a place where a lot of the guys gather with their kids to play handball. And the car clubs came, come every year and they gather there. And really, if you're searching for a place in Southern California that represents like the iconic center of the Chicano street art movement, that's it. All right, we're here in San Diego Harbor at the San Diego Maritime Museum. The ship behind me is called the Star of India. This ship used to take passengers from England to New Zealand in the late 1800s. 
The ship is still commissioned and it still works under sail. There's no motor, there's no steam power, there's only sail power on this vessel. We're going to go over right now and take a look inside the ship. All right, off we go to Mexico. We're gonna go down to Tijuana now, check out the heart of it all, where everything that we're doing on this episode started. All the Mexican cholo street art, tattooing, and all the car culture and everything emanated from here. Going down there to the graveyard, Juan Soldado, myself, Bill, and Rob. And out of this visit, hopefully, we'll be inspired to create three Latino type tattoos and come back and do them all in black and gray and make reference to the fantastic art that emanated from here in the mid 70s. here in Tijuana and this graveyard that I'm standing in is called Juan Soldado and uh, the graveyard is built around the grave of a Mexican soldier Juan Soldado who was killed right here. Uh, he ran from the bottom of the field down here during the war between Mexico and California and was shot down at this point. So a shrine was built to commemorate his death and he's become a saint. The entire graveyard was built around this shrine. And uh, to this day, people come here to ask for benediction from him, and there are plaques and flowers all over his shrine down there uh, thanking him for bringing them blessings. I'm also told that this spot uh, is used for a Santeria practice where people come when they feel they're afflicted by a bad spirit, and they break an egg, and if there's a drop of blood in the egg, they have removed the dark spirit from the person's soul. So this is a very powerful spot I'm standing on right now and this whole area is really inspiring. So I think this is pretty, this is 
distinct image, right? Of course. I mean, a, the, the cross, the sacred heart, you know, the sort of tranquility of it. I think I found my idea, because I haven't done a sacred heart in a few years now, so I think I need to, I need to get back on that track for sure. So yeah, that'd be awesome. This would be it, man. Such a cool little spot, too, so tranquil and everything. Yeah, you it's know, perfect like location. The hills behind tree. and the, the figure and just the colors too. Where'd you grow up, Bill? Well, I grew up in, in El Paso, but I was born in New Mexico. Coila, and uh, I came over when I was, I think, uh, I think three years old. You know, I lived in El Paso till I was, uh, I think, 28. You know, then I moved over here. Um, San Diego. San Diego, yes. Sorry. Uh, I started here at uh, at Avalon. Um, I worked there for about about six years, and uh, I learned a great deal from, of course, from Patty Kelly and from Fit Buchanan. He taught me you know, almost everything that I needed to know at that time. And then, of course, from there, just kind of, you know, just moved on here and there, you know, moved around for a while, and then um, opened up a shop with, uh, you know, with Rob Benavides, mm -hmm. Flying Panther, and um, that was a great, it was a great time for us. And um, after that, just kind of had to move on again, and then just went, opened up, uh, I guess, my own shop, you know, full circle, and that's it so far. I think you do a lot more than just tattoo somebody, you know, I mean, you get to learn who they are and, you know, and their family and all these, you know, because tattooing is very intimate. It's you and the person for hours and hours and hours, you know? In contact. It's like you're connected for life at that point, you know? So it just, it just makes, makes sense, you know, to treat them, you know, just, you know, as well as you can, you know, and hopefully He'll treat you the same, but uh, mm -hmm. it's not always the case, you know, but I think it's worked yeah. out so far. Tell me about being here in San Diego. I think being here in San Diego, like especially when I arrived in 98, it was, uh, you know, it was, you know, it was amazing. You know, I'm in Southern California. I've always wanted to be here. This was, you know, almost like the Mecca, you know, tattooing or, you know, at least California somewhat. And uh, of course, to get here, you know, and to be in San Diego, which I've always wanted to, You'd be here, you know, ever since I started tattooing. And now, you know, it's a reality. And every day, of course, it's perfect. You know, if, uh, if it's like 68 degrees outside, of course, everybody freaks out and nobody goes outside. Everybody stays inside. The bank's closed and schools shut down. And <laughs> everybody really freaks out. But it's too freaking perfect. The radio sometimes. starts going, meep, meep. Yeah, there's alarms. Meep. There's, you know, there's warnings. And, but uh, it's, you know, I mean, it's a hard place to be a good tattooer because there's so many good tattooers here. You know, I mean, but that, you know, of course, then again, you got to work just as hard as they do or even harder and not, you know, not to crush anybody or not to do anything like that, but just, just for yourself. I think it's like you said, I think a good tattooer, you know, almost needs a low self-esteem. You know, they need to hide out like in their room for hours upon end and just, you know, not go outside and not be social and just, you know, and just try as hard as they can, you know, and. Here in San Diego, I think there's a lot of guys, you know, they're doing that right now. So in a few more years, who knows what's going to happen. But I think as, you know, as long as I, you know, I try as hard as I can and, you know, I work as, you know, as good as I can. Hopefully, you know, I'll be up there for just a little bit longer. But, you know, it all has to come tumbling down one day, though. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. And it's a legacy. What you've contributed can't be taken away from you. No, no, no. I think that's the next point for you. You realize that it's not about like being number one anymore. It's just what you can contribute back to it. You know, it's just your own way. And when you let go and it's just your own way, then it becomes really pure. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like the last lesson. That's the enriching of it. So I think that's all we're trying to reach. And I'm glad that we could, you know, become such close friends. Me too. You don't know. How glad I am, you know. It was cool. really a turning point in my life, for sure. Thanks, Bill, for, for doing this and participating in the Gypsy Gentleman. It means a tremendous amount to me. Thank you very much, Marcus. Yeah.
little bit off the plot, but I mean, there's certainly a huge number of Chinese graves here. Ironically, in Tijuana, I noticed that you're really drawn to these. Yeah, well, this is one of the more kind of elaborate ones. I like a lot of the real simple ones, too. It's, I guess the big Chinese community here, Bill was telling me I wasn't aware of that earlier. But yeah, the graves are so it's cool. They're kind of stark, and it's, they have the simple Catholic imagery of the cross. I mean, it kind of ties it in with the Rock of Ages, you know, traditional tattoo thing. And then just picturing these Chinese Chinese imagery, like the, you know, the kind of classic coolie head, like Sailor Jerry, or style with the way Ed Hardy puts a lot of that stuff together, you know, the East and West together. And it's really happening here. You grew up in small town, Texas? No, I grew up in the seventh largest city in the country, San Antonio, Texas. But yeah, it's a, it's a pretty small town mentality, I think, compared to a lot of big cities. Yeah. But you're in like the punk scene and the soul yeah. scene and what other things, like when you're a I teen? started out with, with the punk and hardcore scene. That was the first thing I got really heavy into. Skateboarding, my dad skated, my uncle skated. A lot of people don't realize a lot of cool stuff down there in San Antonio going on. Yeah. It's, it's a real gritty, kind of poor, impressive city. It's a real hot place, but it was a big city, but there weren't a lot of options, especially for a creative type, like an artist, musician type. Yeah. All I could think about was leaving, honestly, when I was a yeah. kid. But I got in the, the punk scene there, the hardcore scene, which was really good. Like, I think when you live in a place like that, where there's not a lot of options going around, you know, you're, everybody, the DIY scene's real big there. Chris Trevino was one of my favorite tattooers. He was in a band called Scrotum Nosedive down there, and he was one of the scene makers, you know, do I have a collection of his flyers, punk flyers, thrash, hardcore stuff, you know. So you uh, decided on San Diego. I mean, there's some parallels between the two cities, right? So you get out here, and then, is that when you really started focusing on tattooing, or? Yeah, well, I always loved it, but I didn't really, it kind of took me a while to put myself really drop into it. And I don't know, I, at first I wasn't into it out here. It took me a couple of years to kind of get into it. I came out here, the weather was nice, the cars were nice. I had, a, I had some contracts with a bunch of biker dudes in Chicago I couldn't get out of for a couple of years, so I couldn't work there. I was mm -hmm. a kid, I didn't really know how to manage that stuff. So mm -hmm. coming out here was against my will at first, just had a friend with a free room, but pretty quick got into it. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I, younger starting out, I felt like I had less fear and I was able to kind of ignorantly approach these dudes and, you know, hey, Trevino, can I work at your shop, you know, can I get a job here? You know, I think I didn't realize who all they, what was going on in tattooing, who they were at the time. Now, you know, after a few more years, I probably would have been shy and I wouldn't have said anything because I'm trying to be respectful or whatever. But back then I was lucky and it was when I started at Avalon, it had a killer crew, but, you know, the big people, my roommate, Jimmy Coffin, who, who was back then, it, one of the first guys doing custom stuff I had seen and I loved it. Started working with Juan Puente there and Fip Buchanan, the owner, and Patty Kelly, the other owner there. And they all became, you know, those are Fip and Juan are two of the biggest guys that helped me out in my life. Mm -hmm. Technically, because he gave me a pair of his prototype machines, the first machines he had built. And, you know, it's like when a kid says, like, you know, these sneakers make you run faster, or this, you know, the machine made, made me tattoo better, it blew my mind. And just seeing the styles that everybody was doing out here, I was able to, since I was a kid growing up in San Antonio, I grew up around a lot of culture, you know, like Catholic art culture and Chicano art, folk art, Mexican stuff, kind of. And out here, I saw a definite spot for that and kind of a need for that. With me and my, my partner, Bill Canales, was, we both kind of did that, you know, because out here people, I think they had a pigeonholed a Chicano artist or a Mexican American stylist to doing black and gray work or gangster clowns or something. Not that I love a lot of that stuff, especially the old stuff, but it's more than that. Me and Bill both thought, you know, this is our, there's a spot for us because not everybody, there's a huge amount of people like us here. It's the big demographic here, you know, kind of middle class Mexican American people. And they want something that shows that, they want something that shows all that culture and all that history and their heritage. They want something that shows through in the tattoos and it's all informed and influenced by it, but it's not, they're not gangsters or cholos or any of this stuff, you know. Even though some of us here are more, you know, I love the lowrider scene and 
I love a lot of that stuff, but my tattoos reflect my take on it, you know, including punk rock music, including skateboarding. A lot of people here like that in Southern California. For me, it's been a tremendous pleasure to have your hospitality, you know, and I also really appreciate your supporting my efforts with the Gypsy Gentleman. I just wanted to tell you that. Well, thanks, man. I feel the same way. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. You're doing a good thing. You can hang on to all the shame. You can live in a sea of madness. I hope one day your ship comes in. Well, as far as uh, as far as the drawing goes, I think that um, you know the style that I found, of course, works. Uh, I guess for me is more like a brushstroke, and you know it develops easier in my hand. I guess that way, and it just you know it makes sense. You know, I mean the of course the lines in a tattoo are very very long sometimes, and so you got to try. You know, of course first work that out like in paper because if you're going to try like paper then on skin it's a whole new thing and so as far as like the lines go I think it's a matter of just trying to approach it in a way that is, is easier and of course to handle. You know, it's, in Southern California it's like you're saying that whole mix of things, car culture, you know, anything, the weather, skateboarding, tattoos, cholo culture, you know, it's no matter what facet of it, of it you're into, it is just like people picture it. All that stuff's happening here, and it's a beautiful place, and there's all these stuff going on, and that's really heavily informs the tattoos here. So I try to participate as much as I can, and I think I try to keep my shop in the middle of all that. Mm -hmm. When you first start out tattooing, it's, you know, you of course trying to do everything that you can. You're doing this style, that style, anything that, you know, I guess comes in the door, you know, because you can't turn it away, you know, because you got to do it. And plus, of course, your boss doesn't want you to turn anything down, so you got to do every kind of style that you can at that point. But then, like, eventually, you kind of figure out what you, uh, I guess, kind of, you know, just radiate to. Nowadays, there's so many good people coming up, and good or bad, whatever your opinions are on TV and how apprenticing and all these things, the fact is there's a lot of people tattooing out there, and I feel like it's a lot of work for me just to keep my stride with that and to try to stay relevant and try to stay on top, you know? Mm -hmm. you know you're not on top of other guys, but at least neck and neck, hopefully, like I say, still, still staying relevant. You know, valid voice. Yeah. I have there's a lot of tattoo, tattooing that I want to get on top of and get better at, and I still have to do, hopefully. spent a lot of time working in street shops and doing all different kind of tattoos all day so my you know custom or my style has always been kind of on the back burner you know and when I was younger I really wanted it to happen you know when I was older I was you know, I didn't like any of my stuff from the years past and get out of that just get, learn how to do a normal regular tattoo I'm not I'm not as good as some of the guys I admire I thought you know technically or creatively and so I never kind of developed that part out, and now that I am have my shop going, it's been five or six years, I get a lot more requests for big scale work, and the other guys in the shop kill it on big scale work, and I feel like I gotta catch up, so I started looking at a lot of the, you know, old circus style or carnival style body suits, you know, the western traditional style sailor body suits, yeah, like you're saying, Bob Shaw, you know, I love his, the tattoos he had from Burt Grimm, and, 
guys like Bert Grimm and Owen Jensen and Percy Waters who could lay out, you know, they're still doing that kind of one point tattooing, but they're laying it out as a cohesive like bodysuit pretty much that looks looks great on it on you, you know. You guys nowadays Stuart Cripwell's a really killer, he's one of my favorite guys and I see him do that stuff all the time and I've been slowly pushing toward that too, so something that I can handle as a as a street or walk in artist that I can wrap my head around. But I don't know if I can hang up one day. So much that I don't know. You know, I thought I had a a grasp on certain things, but now I realize that grasp was just it was false, you know, it was just uh it was just a uh you know, just like smoking mirrors, you know? I need to make it like a physical thing now. I need to make sure that I, you know, I know more about, of course, you know, color theory and about machines and about other things, which I thought, eh, you know, as long as you could draw, as long as you could put it in okay, you should be like pretty okay tattooer, but it's a craft and I need to learn more on my craft. And at this, you know, at this point in my life, you know, I should know it, you know, it's, it's, it's almost embarrassing, of course, not to know it, you know, and I'll admit it, it's, you know, I, you know, I need to really, really hunker down and, and get to work, because um, there's a bunch of tattooers out there that, that's, you know, that's all they think, you know, if you could draw, if you could put it in, you know, you're halfway there, but you're, you're not even halfway there. Hi, my name is Bill Canales. I'm here at Full Circle Tattoo in San Diego, California, and I just tattooed my friend Chris here. I did a Sacred Heart on his leg. Great tattoo. Thank you very much, Bill. You're welcome, sir. You know, my darling, I love you. To you, I'll always return. Rob Benavides, Flying Panther Tattoos here in San Diego. This is my client, Michelle Rubano. She let me tattoo my TJ Graveyard Cooley tattoo on her today. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. My name is Marcus, this is my dear friend Jordan, who was nice enough to come in and get the Amores Perros tattoo on his leg. I love you, mate. You're a great friend. Thanks for supporting the Gypsy Jones. Thanks a lot, Marcus. I really appreciate the tattoo. Go. Cool. Thanks for watching Gypsy Gentleman number four, San Diego and Tijuana. Remember, tell your friends to tell their friends about the Gypsy Gentleman. And you never know, I might be filming in your town soon. Come on, Duke. Ocean that sets a man free. I'm leaving today. I miss your embrace. But there's a boat